Hello, Pickaholics. I have a uh, person's first challenge lock here. He's going for blue. Um, I hope I do not butcher this name as Seminawa. That is the politest way I can figure out how to say that. He has sent me this to pick and we get to see what we have in here. Where he also sent a shipping label. And that's the key. And that's the lock. Is there anything else? There's a note in here. Let's see what this says. Okay, there's nothing on there that uh, <laughs> we shouldn't be posting. Uh, it is in Klingon to begin with, and there's an English translation, luckily, because I do not speak Klingon, even though I love Star Trek. Uh, I present to you the first challenge lock that I have modified. Enjoy. So, we have an Abus 8345. This is the new series. And it's in a quick set keyway, which is always a little bit nicer than some of the others. So, let's see what we have in this. How does that look? That looks good. All right, tension wrench. I can only pick these clockwise and a little bit of lovely spring pressure to begin with. So let's see what we get into this. You instantly overset one pin from a click. Movement. Another pin wants to pick. And we get a lot of springiness. It's a little bit of spring pressure to overcome to begin with. and then it just goes. Five pins. Touch two and it drops back out. These are lovely locks when you get them to begin with. Avis puts a standard driver in one and four spools in it. And these are a lot of fun to pick. Spring pressure is not helping at all.
overcome it, and it tends to lock some other things up at the same time. That, I think, overset something. Hmm. Gonna be another long video, guys. <laughs> Somewhere we're doing something wrong because everything is just springy. We got one and three set. There we go. Finally, a little bit of core movement. That might tell us what we got to pick next. Still got that extra spring pressure. hard to, I'm having to push extra hard, an even bigger false set. I'm having to push pretty hard on the spring because it wants to counter rotate for me. 
So it impacts feedback badly. There on one, two is now drop down. Three feels like a high pin, four feels like a low pin. Might be a six pin lock. Nope. All right, so all set. Nothing is wanting to counter rotate. Feeling the key is gonna look like a sawtooth. Highs and lows. Let's get something a little bit bigger and stronger. Can only get on the pin. Can't quite tell if that is counter rotation. I think it is six pins, but the six pin is just a deep one. It's probably a five pin key, I think. get it a little bit in there we go and we don't have a name on that I am curious about the key now let's see what's the easiest way to get into this that is a tricky little lock that's for sure it is six pin key kw5 and yes it does look like a sawtooth we've got a six on the back alongside of a one 
five, one, five, and one again on there. Just big ups and downs. So Avis, we're going to you, you, and you. I'm lucky you're getting in the way. Yep, locked it back up again. He said there was a problem with the core. He had done something and me turning it. Also, it does have the key retainer in it, which is upside down. The little black piece is supposed to be up. Yeah, he compressed the limiter on it so it could rotate the other way. So you do have to be careful with this lock. Everything else looks like it's in good shape, but the shackle was about ready to pop out as well, too. Let's set that aside and get into the fun. When gutting an 8345 cylinder, you have to be very careful of that pin. The limiting pin, there are places to drop pins out here in the bottom and you can turn that and get it in that position and get it out. It also has a rekeying window. What you can do on these is with a key, you would insert the key and the key does work, but it only turns one direction. It's probably, oh, because the pin popped out and now it's, oh, because it's gravity fed. Um, get back in there. Okay, fine. We're going the other way. Shim the lock. Shim it that way. Make sure we have no pins going any which direction. You always want to make sure that that pin is not in line with those holes. Just turn it a little bit and follow it through. It's a standard cylinder at that point but it is tricky. Uh, he's filed the top because we do have pins that are riding a little bit low in this and they're nickel silver pins, which is strange to see because most of the time for quick set, you have to use other things. Let's see what we have in the way of pins. One is a standard. Two is a torpedo overset trap. Very nicely done. Number three is a standard. Number four has a little trap point on top of it. Number five is a standard and another torpedo pin. Very nice, very nice. And I do believe, yes, Counter milling in one, two, three, four, and five on both sides. Actually, you know what? I'm sorry. Lucky, bye. Bring us down into a level where we can see the pins. I apologize. So counter milling on one, two, three, four, and five and clean on there but the Bible's been flattened because of the extreme keying to get them to fit in there. Tweezers. I gotta move this out just a hair. It's a little too close for me to be able to see anything. And we have a homemade spool on one. And a spring and a serrated driver. Nice work on number two. Springs have been replaced. They're not the standards. They're normally bronze springs. Another serrated driver. Very nice work. Looks like it's a hacksaw blade. Let's go back. And uh, it's almost a spool <laughs> on number six. More like a, just an extra wide serration 
we'll populate it and take a look at it and see. Oh, wow. That was what was really causing fun. Oh, that is a beautiful pin. It's a... Uh, 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 Gotta go with serrated gin. It's got a reduced diameter on the nose and serrations, but it acts like a spool at the same time. This is some nice pin work here. And a serrated. And last spring, there you are. I don't believe there's any mods on the Bible itself. I don't normally will see threading down through these holes. That's how you have to get to it. And there's the cover plate for the sixth chamber. But double check. Yeah, that's all clean there. That's a hard, fun lift to get to there. But number two. Torpedo overset. And we'll just do the bottom pins first as they roll away. A little serration on top on these nickel silver pins. People wonder, American locks, we don't have the steel pins. These are nickel silver, so they're a little harder, but they, even knowing the keys that are nickel silver, where are, I don't have one. Yeah, I do. No, that's brass. The keys have kind of a gold, goldish color, but the nickel silver pins are silver. And what you do is you do nickel silver bottom pins with a nickel silver key, they wear less. If you use a brass key on nickel silver pins, it actually wears the nickel silver pins faster and vice versa. If you use bra brass pins with a nickel silver key, the nickel silver key wears faster. It's that odd combination of the two metals rubbing against each other. And that's the number one beautiful homemade spool. This is taking longer than I thought it would. And number two, nice beautiful serrated driver. And number three is another beautiful serrated driver. And the light-lipped serrated driver in four. It's this one though, guys. This one. Look at this. Reduced diameter, serrations, fine ser serrations with kind of that beveling to get to it, but they're reduced diameter. So it's like a double-step gin, almost like a Christmas tree. But a Christmas tree normally would have one large ring. And then in number six, just an extra wide serration in that. Let's see how effective this lock actually is. It's a quiet lock to start with. Oh yeah. Look at that. Number one is all the way in. Number two, you've got to go up past one serration, but number one, that thing drops all the way down and you have to lift all the way up on that. Number three, we're definitely gonna be having, yeah, lifting all the way up into it. Number four, just catching on those little counter mellings. Beautiful work, very nicely done. And then that gin, serrated gin, it's all the way in there and just catches. Yes, it does. And on number six. Yeah, just right there. If you don't lift it, you still have catch that and it goes. So this is the no name challenge lock. From, let me remind myself, Seminoa is the way I'm going with it. And one last time, close up of the drivers, because the rest are in the plug. And that's what I have for you guys today. Have a great day, Pickaholics.